So far, my DeLorean is looking pretty nice cosmetically. And that's because we performed a big restoration on the body, including regraining the stainless steel, and I ripped out most of the interior to replace or restore everything while I was waiting for mechanical parts to come in the mail. After making the outside and inside of the car look like new, we dry ice blasted the underbody, removing pounds of dirt and debris, and the final product looked great. The only issue is we quite literally blasted right through the frame because it was weak from rust. So it already had holes in the frame and we exposed them all with the dry ice. And now I'm in a bit of a pickle because I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna fix this. And I think there's rust everywhere. Luckily, OJ from Fluid Motor Union who does most of my fabrication work is on the way to inspect it. So fingers crossed that he has good news. And we have a phone call with the original owner of the DeLorean a little later on. And he's gonna tell us more about the history of the car. And spoiler alert, this DeLorean does not actually have 16,000 miles as I suspected. It has much, much more. So lots of surprises, lots of disappointments, but the original owner did mail me this mystery green box that we're gonna open together when we call him and nothing bad can come out of a green shoe box, right? Before all that, we have a ton of mechanical work to do, like these coolant tubes that need to go back on the car, and they are very, very dirty. So I'm gonna spray them all down with some degreaser. We ran out of time with the dry ice blast machine to clean these, and we ran out of dry ice. But we should be able to do this with the pressure washer, some degreaser, maybe a wire wheel, I don't know. We got the red nozzle on the pressure washer. Let's see what happens. Nice. I need a little wire wheel on here to make them really nice, but this is working. Some of these have a ton of grime right where the hose clamps were. And for these crusties, we're gonna use this wire wheel. Just like that. Beautiful. You guys wanna see something cool? So I'm using the drill on the edges, but this along the entire pipe, and it's working out really, really well. Coming out pretty clean. All the tubes are cleaned up, dried, and ready to go back on. So this is what they looked like before, and this is what they look like now. Much, much better. But before those go on, let's put the whole engine back together, and we'll start placing the tubes in from there and then fishing them down and then, you know, connecting them to radiators and such. If you guys were around for the Valley of Death video, then you know we have to reinstall our intake manifold. And before that, I'm gonna replace some things like this coolant hose that looks like it's about to blow up. We'll get a new thermostat in there as well. Uh, but some of you had wondered why we didn't dry ice blast the engine. Well, we actually did, but it didn't really work out too much. We did a little section of the valve cover and it didn't make that big of a difference. Honestly, to fully restore this engine, especially cosmetically, we would need to take the whole thing out, remove all the covers, sand them down, have them painted, a whole big restoration project. And the goal for the DeLorean has always been to get it to run and drive and look pretty for Halloween, which is like two weeks away because I'm parking it on the front lawn of my house. So we don't have time to disassemble an entire engine, rebuild it and paint everything and go nuts. We'll have to save that for another time. So first we need to reinstall an aluminum coolant Y pipe and we have to get out these 1981 O-rings. Nice and crusty. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is probably a big reason for little coolant leaks in this valley of death. Yeah, very possible these things were leaking. It wouldn't be a project without some Mercedes-Benz sunroof grease. We're gonna use that on our seals, our new ones. Seal number two, going in. Before our aluminum Y pipe goes in, we need to put in our gold coolant pipe. It's worth $1 million. A little silicone spray on our new hose. Okay, there's that. And we'll tighten up our clamp. There we go. Normally I take stickers off of hoses, but this one says DMC, or at least DM and then half a C. So I'm leaving it. Oh, the clamp is almost gonna cover it up. Uh, I can still see it, DMC. A little silicone spray. And this gets slid onto the back of the water pump. All right, nice and tight. All right, it's time for the aluminum Y pipe. And as this really short hose, this is gonna be fun. Okay, so I have to try and sneak this underneath. Slide that under the water pump first. And there we go. That was easy. I'm a DeLorean expert. John would be proud. Oh, this is beautiful. All right, four bolts going in. Two shorties go in the back. Longer ones go in the front. 
All right, I'll go ahead and tighten these up by hand. I have no idea what the DeLorean torque spec is. I wonder if there's like one of those Hanes or Chilton's manuals. Remember the books you used to buy at the auto parts store and they would tell you how to work on your car? Is there a DeLorean one of those? If there is, I want it. Like not even necessarily to work on the car, but just because it'd be cool memorabilia. All right, click, little baby click. Click. All right, this is all done. Now we have to run some vacuum tubes. Oh, wait a minute, hold on, before I forget, we have to plug in one of many coolant sensors. And then we have this sensor here. There's like a million coolant sensors. We have one here, one right here, one right here. And then there's one under the car, like on one of the tubes. There's four of them. DeLorean was super into coolant temperature. Like he wanted to know the show what it was. Now DeLorean may have been obsessed with coolant temperature, but not nearly as obsessed as Auto Tempest is with helping you find your next new car. Autotempest.com is the only site you need to find your next new car, no matter what you're looking for. Their site is super easy to use. Just type in what you want and you're done. Need a super reliable daily driver? They have you covered. Need a super unreliable German car? They got you covered there too. Are you itching for a DeLorean? After watching me find every Everything that's wrong with mine, you can find those there too. And that's because they gather all the listings from all the major online marketplaces and put them in one nicely organized page for you to browse. This saves you time and money and they have a sweet mobile app available for Android and iOS. So you can search on the go and find the car of your dreams. So stop playing around going to like 10 individual websites looking for your next car. Auto Tempest is easy to use and it's free and you can check it out right now by going to autotempest.com or by clicking on my link down below or by clicking on my other link down below so you can download the free app. So a big thanks to Auto Tempest for making looking for cars so easy. I'm not gonna lie, I'm always tempted to buy something new on there. Um, and a big thanks for sponsoring this video. Next, we have a thermostat to replace. And I would just like to point out that these are 11 millimeter and so are the intake bolts and so are the bolts that hold on this aluminum. Why? So weird because there are tens on the DeLorean and they used 11s for some things. And why are a lot of steering shafts 11 millimeters? You guys ever notice that when you're taking a steering shaft off, it's an 11 mil. What's up with that? Sometimes I feel like the engineers all got together and it's just one big joke. Like they sit around at the bar, just laughing it up that with no explanation, they just use 11s for steering shafts. Okay, this thermostat is very crusty and I'm actually surprised because the rest of the cooling system was nice. Like green coolant looked good. But anyway, good thing we're replacing it. All right, I cleaned this area up. So with the thermostat out of the way, let's do a little slicer right here. Oh, more crusties. This should be fun to get back in. Anytime you gotta cut a hose off or a belt off, you know you're in for a fun time getting it back on. You're just making it easy for yourself for a few moments. That's all. Calm before the storm. All right. Yeah. Hose number two. Okay, so we're replacing this with this. A little bit of a step up. Let's see if I can sneak it in. All right, let's try this on first. Oh yeah, we can do this. Look at that. Perfection. Woo, that looks good. Next, we have one of the many coolant hoses that attaches to the tubes that we cleaned up. So we'll get this one on first and I'll leave this loose so we can clock this properly. Let's see if we can sneak this one on too. This one was so hard to get off. I'm gonna give it the old sandwich folderoo. That's what I'm calling it. Okay, ow, that didn't work. All right, let's try that again. We'll go on the top first. Give it a twist. Give it the old sandwich fold. And then we come around back, give it a fish hook. And another side fish hook. Then another twist and a doodad and it's on. That's in the instructions. Fish hook, double fish hook, doodad, top, bottom. Hose on. Now I'm gonna tighten the bottom clamp, but we'll leave this one loose. If you guys remember, we needed to have these loosened up to put the intake on. I wanna replace the spark plug wires while we're here. These are probably original, and I actually saw some of these arcing when we had it running before. I call them bougie cords. Auto radio bougie cord. That is a cool name. And I'm replacing them with something that sounds almost just as cool. AC Delco premium silicone seven millimeter. Bougie cord auto radio, so cool. Keep your GM all GM. Click. Let's see how Google Translate says this. Booga cord. Booga cord. It's bougie cord. It's a bougie DeLorean. Google doesn't know. The spark plug wire going to the coil is red. I was thinking it might be like an Excel or something. It's also Booga cord, according to Google. Why did they use a red one for the coil? It's so weird. We're going black, like it should have been. I don't need any fancy red wires. Come on now. Okay. It's intake time. New intake seals. Mercedes-Benz sunroof grease. What else is stopping us here? Nothing. 
Nothing. Just gonna go around, grease these things up. They slide right into their recess in the cylinder head. There we go. So satisfying. Intake manifold time, and lots of things need to be kind of snuck around for the intake. And I did clean this out, if you guys are wondering. We got harnesses, we got tubes, we got it all. There we go. All right, no, well, very uneventful. Nothing's in the way, we're good. Cool. I still haven't found gloves that I like, so we're swapping these out. I'm making dinner tonight, so I'm just gonna make sure my hands are, you know, clean. <laughs> Thinking of making some steak tacos. What are you guys making for dinner tonight? or lunch or breakfast or whatever time you're watching this. The four 11 millimeter bolts for the intake are now going in. There's only four that hold this in. Kind of weird. There we go. Oh, this one's nice and easy. Wait, no, this one's actually not easy. The intake runner totally gets in the way. It's just easy to thread in with your finger in the beginning. Oh, this one's actually easy. Oh, I get the ratcheting wrench for the win on this guy. Yeah, two of them get wrenched. The other two get socketed. Those are real terms in the automotive industry. Got to socket something. Would you tighten that bolt? I socketed it. it. This is one of the easier ones that you could socket, and so is this one. Check it out, I can do this with my eyes closed because I'm a professional DeLorean guy. Click. All right, this tube is going back on the intake with a new seal, and I cannot find the bolt, so we got a brand new one. Really nice and shiny. It's actually stainless, unlike most of the hardware on this car. It's not stainless. Click. It's time for our CIS flapper with the throttle bodies, dual DeLorean throttle bodies. And if I remember correctly from when I did this like two weeks ago, I kind of do one of these and let's see. Yep, yeah, right there. Okay, cool. Now we can tighten these hose clamps. That they're out of the way of the intake. How do you guys tighten hose clamps? Screwdriver or socket? I definitely like using the socket more, a little bit more professional. Get a better feel for how tight you're going. And you can sneak in little spots like this. So we need a vacuum line from here to the intake. The one that was on here broke in like a million pieces, but check this out. This was on my Buick Grand National and it fits. I gotta feed it in there quite a bit and it fits right there. Perfect. I knew the Grand National would come to the rescue on one part on the DeLorean from the same era. They're practically brothers. Although I don't think the Grand National likes the DeLorean to be honest with you. Grand National is like kind of the tough guy, big brother. And the DeLorean's like the artsy one that doesn't get along with anyone else in the family. It's kind of an outcast. But then later in life comes into his own and kind of just then fits in and is cool. It's kind of like that. It is thermostat time. Of course we have a new seal. A little lubrication. There we go. And then we have the housing. And we're definitely getting this on before the bullhorns. That's what I call them. The thermoset is done. I'm just cleaning up the ceiling surface here for the throttle bodies. A lot of people drop off rags at my house because they know I'm a mechanic and this is what we're using a day to remember. Disinfect your surroundings with this angry guy. This deserves to be a rag, that's for sure. Bullhorn's getting some new seals. And then this guy goes like this. Then we have new paper gaskets that go in here and we have some new bolts. We only have new bolts because I sent out a bunch of hardware for this car to get blasted and soaked in some kind of chemical that's gonna make it gold and look all new and pretty again. I mostly did that for the suspension when that has to go back together, but I accidentally sent out a bunch of engine bolts, a lot of which you can't even see. So we must make do with what we have. Actually, these look really nice. They look better than what was on there. New hardware for the center bullhorn bolt too. Final tighten by hand, of course. All right, bullhorn is on. And we're gonna lubricate the linkage right now for the throttle, a little pen train oil. All right, throttle is back, almost done. Fuel distributor. Our fuel distributor is going back on. And now our flat blade screwdriver. You guys know the deal with the old fuel distributor. Three flat blade screws, a bunch of fuel lines go on here. And then we'd be ready to fire this thing up again. We still have to finish the whole cooling system, but I just want to fire it up, make sure we got everything. So let's do that. Everything's back together. We primed the fuel system, no leaks, we're all good. And so we're gonna start this up shortly with no muffler. We'll be able to hear a DeLorean technically straight piped, but we ain't starting nothing with this broken starter wire. Some of you guys had seen this in one of the other videos. It was hanging on by a thread when I bought this car. So we got to fix this up. All right, we'll twist these wires together like so. Yeah, the solder is melting into the wire right now. 
All right, perfect. Nice weatherproof seal. Oh, and I also wanted to mention, some of you guys had said I should have dry ice blasted the Valley of Death, cleaned it up really well, and then filled it with epoxy. The issue there is that dry ice blasting is very abrasive, and we don't know how thin that aluminum is. It's cast aluminum, and if we blow through, I literally need to replace the entire engine, which again, I don't have time for or the desire to. Some of you guys had mentioned fill it with epoxy. Mike at DeLorean Midwest has seen a bunch of these that come in with the epoxy in there, and it never sticks or does anything, so just kind of pointless. So so right now we've cleaned it up as best as we can. We've made sure that it's dry. Everything is fine. It's not leaking right now. So we're just moving on. Okay, straight pipe DeLorean first start. Here we go. Oh, hey, automatic door. Wasn't closed all the way. Loud. There we go. Fuel cycling through. That yeah, runs good. <laughs> Great by DeLorean. Oh yeah, it's very loud. I'm running a little shaky right now. I'm gonna shut it off. Whew. All right, we gotta continue on with the with the cooling system before we get too crazy here, but uh, it runs, it runs, everything's back. I don't know how well it's running right now for some reason, but we'll we'll cross that bridge a little bit later. Let's cooling stuff. Before we get to the cooling system, I think Fluid Motor Union is in the parking lot. All right, OJ's here uh, inspecting the frame. We're gonna come up with a game plan right now, so this is the good side. That pocket screwdriver is just going right through. Yeah, it's not the worst. The main issue here is this epoxy that's between the two layers. For us to get anything on you know, a weld or a panel or try to cut it off, we're only gonna be getting access to what we have access to. So if we cut this bottom panel off, sure, we'll be able to get a panel in there, but what about over the hump here? You know, What about further back? What are we gonna see in between the metal here for the control arm and the frame up here, like, is it gonna be bad? Do yeah. we, at that point, do we just say, who cares? Let's just put the, pay like, I don't think you're gonna wanna do that, like. Yeah, see, this is, the, this is the problem with the DeLorean guys, is I plan on keeping this car forever. At the end of the last video, I was being really positive about this, and some of you guys in the comments even said, like, oh, it's no big deal, you got some holes, but it is kind of a big deal to me, you know? Like, to have a rusty frame and can you get this structural fairly easy? Yes, I think there's no problem. I don't think you're gonna run into like this thing bending. The problem though is any, any weld we attach to that is just gonna be a subpar weld. It's right. gonna crack off epoxy. It's gonna pull into the heat, the iron oxide from the rust that it's gonna pull in there is probably just gonna make the weld junk anyway. So yeah, maybe it's attached in there. Maybe it looks good after you throw some paint over it, but what's going on? Right. after you know those years after is it going to be the same thing is it going to be worse like i said if you were like hey let's get this thing structural that's easy if you want to get this thing where you're not worried about it rusting later on becoming a worse problem somewhere else that we didn't see i don't know man you probably you probably got to take this frame down and you want to see the bad side now <laughs> oh boy yeah yeah, Let's just say we attach the, the weld along here. You know, what about up top here? What about further back? Like, we, we don't know. Right, right, and this is where the control arm sits in here. It, it hasn't flexed or anything yet. But I don't even, how do you even properly weld anything? You'd have to do a bridge there. weld because if you tried to dig into the actual crevice there, you'd just be basically contaminating instantly with the epoxy. Like, it would just heat up the epoxy. And, you know, you might be able to bridge, you know, a weld between the two for it to be structural, but it wouldn't be a good weld. It could crack off. It could rust further. Yeah. It's just not. It's not the right way to do it, man. And you then, know? yeah, I kind of, over the weekend, I, I, yeah. I took a screwdriver and oh, this is the epoxy. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So since the last video, I poked around a little bit more, sent OJ some more pictures. So he already kind of prepped me and it was nice enough to come out here and just kind of take a look. But I don't think this is anything I want to try and like hack together. You know, it's, uh, there's more too. Let me show you. So there, here's the side of the frame and it's just like a big crater. Oh, I just poked right through, so. Oh, is that a hole now? Yep. Yeah. So. Uh, something else I showed you guys in the ice blasting video was this, we were cleaning off the VIN tag here. These are the last four digits of the VIN. And look at what's inside. It is just ballooned out in rust. So we'd have to cut this off and just weld in a whole new patch panel there. And then random places all over the frame are ballooned out. And that's because there's rust under here. So we could probably flake up all this epoxy and it's weak. All of these seams right here have rust in between them. You can see this is not looking good either. And here is a hole on this side of the frame 
frame. And I started cleaning up the front shock towers here. My plan was to grind this all down and then get a rust inhibitor in here and then paint it. But again, things are ballooning. Like where does this end? Where these double plates are? You can see here where there's the double wall. So we have a sheet of metal here and one here and all along the seams is rust. So how do you really get in there? I don't know. The whole weekend I was just thinking about us putting these panels in here and if after that I would be like, okay, let's move on. And it's like, no. The reality is I'd be like, I would always think about it, so. Anyway. Um, yeah, I hate to break your heart like that. No, nah, I just, I'd rather hear the truth. I used the word devastated, I think, in the last video. And some of you guys are like, well, this isn't that devastating. Eh, it is. I paid $33,000 for this car and the frame is, I got holes in it, so. And it's gonna take, sucks. I mean, it's gonna take a lot more work. I mean, if you especially have to drop the frame down, I mean, that's probably not what you were expecting. I was not expecting to take the frame off my DeLorean, no. But that is now a realistic possibility. The engine and transmission, like at the bare minimum, need to come out and then kind of go from there. But with the engine and trans out, we're just, I could just take the whole frame off, have it blasted and. I, I don't think that's a bad idea. All right, guys, um, not how I planned this to go. I uh, thought last week we would be cutting and well, Welding and I'd be painting and grinding, but I don't think that's the case. So I think at this point, uh, what I need to do to meet my Halloween deadline is just get right back to work, put it all together, get this thing running and driving. I still have never really driven the car at all. So uh, we'll stick with that and we'll have to revisit everything else later. I uh, did not go into this thinking that the frame needed as much work as it needs. So I'm hoping by the end of this video, I'll have like a decent game plan on what I'm gonna do with the frame. Right now, honestly, I just, I don't even wanna think about it. I'm just gonna move on with the project because I do have to still meet my goal of having this thing running and driving on the front lawn of my house for Halloween. That was the goal after all. It's just the only difference now is that after that goal is achieved, Hopefully I will have a crazy amount of work still to do with a lot of unknowns. So I don't know. I'm hoping to have a good plan for you guys at the end of this video. And then we'll open up that green mystery box from the original owner, see what he left us. Hopefully coordinates to where he left a brand new frame for a DeLorean. That would be awesome. But we're gonna keep on moving. We're gonna keep on moving to get the cooling system done. And yeah, and if you guys know of some kind of cool inspirational quote that I could plug in right now, like move forward or something like that, just plug that in right now. That's, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying right now. I'm just, I'm bummed, that's all. But uh, anyway, this is the original crusty radiator. Here is our condenser, also pretty crusty. I think I might just end up replacing this. And we have crusty fans. So I do have new fans on order, but I don't really know exactly exactly when they're gonna be here and we need to keep rolling. Yeah, at this point, I, I only have like a couple weeks left to get this thing running and driving, so, okay. So I have a brand new radiator for the DeLorean without the plastic end tanks. This is 100% aluminum and I cleaned up the fans a little bit. We'll be replacing them later. I think I'm gonna also eventually replace this condenser. Luckily, this stuff isn't too bad to get out of the car, but I couldn't find one of these in time, so we'll just go back together with this one for now. Pretty cold, so I don't really need air conditioning. I could probably leave this thing off altogether, but we're just gonna put it on, it's practice. Before we install the radiator, I wanna swap out the master cylinder for a new master cylinder because we have easy access to replace this. And I'm gonna be replacing the entire braking system on the DeLorean. So we have some nice Willwood brake calipers for the front, new rotors, bearings, all sorts of new cool stuff. Everything's been sprayed with penetrating oil. Okay, we're good on this first one. The brake lines themselves are in great shape. Master cylinder might be okay too, but it is very, very old and I don't wanna contaminate our new braking system. And there is a chance that it might have an internal leak and we don't need that. Considering everything I'm doing to this car, this is cheap insurance. Okay, it's threading out. Okay, let that one out. Line number two, coming out. Too easy. I say that before I have these two crusty looking bolts to get off. Second brake line out, we're good. Couple of 17s. Oh, no problem. We're good on that one. And that one too. That came off and so did the battery. The tabs on a lot of these batteries are broken. So, pain in the butt. Ooh, she's crusted on there. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Old Master Zylinda is out. I don't know what this orange bracelet is, but yeah, it's there. It's got some numbers. We do have to swap over the reservoir, so we have to pull a couple of pins. Come on now. There we go. To hammer a couple of pins out. They are frozen. And with some penetrating oil, hopefully that'll help. Okay, I'll clean these pins up. But now we can remove the reservoir. Ooh, nasty, nasty fluid. Oh, what is this? Whoa, <laughs> this car is so nasty. 
What? It's like caviar. I have caviar inside of my brake reservoir. This is gross. I'm very happy I'm replacing all this because who knows what's inside of here. Even with a flush, I don't trust it. Nasty. All right, I'm gonna go clean this mess. After a few minutes in the pressure washer, this is what we have. Looks much better. It is now worthy of our new master cylinder. Beautiful. New golden master cylinder going in. All right, look at these brake lines back on, but you guys wanna see something funny? This connector is supposed to go here to the reservoir, and I don't know if it's like ever been plugged in. It's just plugged up with dirt. This definitely would have had a brake warning light on for the last like, you know, 30 something years. Here it is, condenser, radiator, fans. Going back in the DeLorean. Oh, wait a minute. No, I can't go back in. I don't have brackets. Ah, oh, I sent these brackets out. The ones that bolted onto the ends of the frame that hold the radiator mounts. I sent a bunch of bolts and brackets and miscellaneous stuff out to a company that's gonna sandblast them all and then recoat them so they look all nice and new. And I sent those out, darn. There is a lot of stuff to remember on this car, let me tell you. Okay, so I can't put this in right now, but we could put those nice shiny aluminum tubes in. So we'll get that done. And that should actually line us up pretty well with the phone call with the original owner. We're supposed to chat towards the end of the day. So anyway, let's do some tubes. Shiny any aluminum pipe number one is going in. And I already have a new hose on the other end. So we'll slide that in like so. And this one goes over here. What's interesting is we're eliminating this pipe altogether. This one used to go here and then there was a connection here and another connection here. So we're eliminating a connection point as well. So that's just how the cooling kit comes now for the DeLorean. But you know, I'm keeping this pipe. It's literally like a pipe. We have a new hose for our coolant reservoir as well. Oh, this feels so good replacing all these nasty hoses. New everything. Beautiful. Next, we have an aluminum piece with yet another coolant sensor. And that gets fit in through here. Next tube going right up next to the frame rail. And then it sits right in here underneath the parking brake cable. Silicone spray. Next tube. There we go. And I'm not really tightening any of the clamps just yet because we might need to make little tweaks, but it's coming together. All right, next tube going in. This is so satisfying. It just goes together like, like Legos. So this was part of a big hose kit for this car. So these are all gates and I'm not sure if someone literally just cuts these up and makes a DeLorean kit, but here they are. And most of these were all ballooned out and in pretty rough shape, but surprisingly, the cooling system wasn't leaking that bad. Like the engine was full of coolant. Now in the next DeLorean episode, when we get the radiator in, once I get those mounts back, we'll find out how hard it is to bleed one of these systems with all of these tubes and the radiator in the front, the engine in the back and all that madness. We'll cross that path next time. We're gonna be putting a lot of new parts, like pretty much everything. We should be able to drive it for the first time in the next video. All the tubes are complete. I'm waiting for this bracket to get back from being blasted but we are ready for the arrival of the radiator bracket so we can put that in. So things are looking good for the DeLorean and we're about to go speak with the original owner right now and find out what's in the green mystery box. But first I wanna go around with some rust reformer and just take care of all the existing rust that's on the car and stop it in its tracks because I spoke with OJ again and a couple other DeLorean experts and what's back there. They say it hasn't gotten into the structural portion yet. It eventually will. For now, the car is totally safe to drive. This is a car that's only gonna be driven in nice weather, maybe like a thousand miles a year. So I could probably just live with this right now, but eventually I'm gonna fix it the right way. And I think that's gonna require the removal of the engine and transmission so we can get to the frame at every angle and potentially dropping out the entire frame. I, I don't know, it just depends on how far you wanna go. And I'm gonna keep this car forever. So you, you know what I'm gonna probably do. But anyway, we gotta keep moving on. We gotta make the goal of having this car running and driving. So let's go around with some rust reformer. This is gonna go on clear and then turn black and it's going to just stop all of the rusting. So we'll just freeze everything in time so that later we can fix it properly. So areas like this, I've already cleaned up with a wire wheel. So I've gotten it all the way down to where the epoxy is still attached. And so structurally, this is totally fine. It just bothers me because we're gonna have nice coilovers and big brakes and stuff. But anyway, this goes on clear. So it's not just gonna spray everything black if you get a little overspray, but it turns the rust black. Some of it happens right away and then some of it, you just gotta come back a few minutes later. So we're just gonna spray all these seams where there's double metal and there could be rust in between. I just wanna stop all of that. Stop rusting.
I wish I could go back to like 1991 when he parked this thing and just sprayed all of this underneath to preserve it for myself later. This is the plate we're gonna replace and we can get to it by removing this bottom one, but OJ said it'd be better if we can get to the top as well. So we can just take all of this out. We'd actually remove these perches, blast them down to bare metal and reinstall them and just literally make this like a brand new frame. It's gonna take some work. All right, I'll go around and do the rest. I already have plans of making this frame even stronger, but like right now with this 130 horsepower engine, you could probably have half the frame rotted out and that's not gonna make any difference at all. You know, once OJ and the guys at Fluid get their hands on it, it's gonna be better. It's gonna be the best DeLorean frame ever. Okay, it's mystery green box time. Dave said to give him a call, get him on speaker and find out a little bit more about the DeLorean. So I talked to him very briefly a few weeks ago and I found out the mileage, 16,000 miles, not correct. Hopefully we'll learn more about that. Hello, Alex, how are you doing? Doing. Very good, Dave. How are you? Can't complain. Nobody listen. <laughs> excellent, excellent. You are moving to Nevada? Yeah, we bought a house down there about two and a half years ago. Oh, it's good for you. It's cold in North Dakota. Yeah, that's true. North Dakota to Nevada. That is that is quite the difference in lifestyle, I would imagine. <laughs> well, my wife picked out the spot 18 miles from the Strip. She doesn't gamble, but she plays golf and she loves the golf course we're on. So. That's awesome. Well, you know what? I'll be in Vegas uh, November 1st through the 3rd for SEMA, so I'll, I'll give you a ring. SEMA? Oh, I would love that. The reason this is strange. My son-in-law um, lives in Norway, and he's the president of AMCAR, American Automobile Club of Norway. Whoa. Uh, is yeah, he is yeah. he going to SEMA? Yeah. Oh, yeah. very he's cool. We should definitely car. meet up out, out there. That'd be fun. I have the green box that you sent me. Yes. <laughs> and don't tell me what it is. I, I won't. He's, <laughs> I'm going to open it right now with you on the phone. This is very exciting. I feel like it's Christmas. Anything to do with this DeLorean, like anything I discover about it is just... It's so much fun. All right, here we go. Yeah, it was for 10 years. <laughs> well, well, yeah, about 10 years. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's very well packed. Oh, get out of here. The stainless steel DeLorean. No way. This yeah. is so nice. How long have you had this? Um, I don't know, sometime uh, after uh, I bought the DeLorean. Um, oh, so cool. Yeah, my kids got it for me. Oh, so this is this is from a long time ago. Yeah, it is. It was like probably wow. about the time I parked it. Oh know? my gosh. So yeah, this is probably from like the early 90s or something. And it's so yeah. cool. The doors actually stay up really nice. Yeah, we got to get some new struts <laughs> for them because they don't work. No, they never had me. Oh, oh, this one doesn't. Okay. So it is a real yeah. DeLorean. It's, uh, you know, it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this part of the frame back here would be great. We found some rust in the back frame that is going to need some work, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, I saw I saw the holes. I saw the uh, yeah dry ice. Yeah. Oh, you the saw the dry ice video. Yep, yep. So I kind of took a better look in there and. Yeah, it's got some holes in the rear frame, but we should be able to fix it up, just not in time for the Halloween. You know, I, did I tell you that my whole goal was to get this thing on my front lawn for Halloween as like a decoration? Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> we're, we're getting there. I know you saw the last video. It's actually not much different than the last one, except we have the engine back together and the cooling system and, and some other stuff, but I, we're, it's gonna happen. It's gonna run and drive on my front lawn. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Dave, so I, I just wanted to ask you, um, I had mentioned in one of the videos about how I didn't think the mileage was correct, the 16,000, and I know we talked briefly about this, but you had said, was the Speedo cable broken like two or three twice. times? Twice? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, broke twice, replaced, and then disconnected, and then probably reconnected, but I think, oh no, three times, because the third time it actually worked. Oh. But that was, right, that was right before I parked it. It was just one of those faulty parts, they broke. Yeah, that's what I hear. It's a really common. Um, so it says yep. 16,000. What do you think the real mileage is roughly? I think it's about 45. I think all the tires were original. It might have been the back when it said I replaced them or something. But, yeah. But uh, if I did, it was just right before you know, I parked it. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't drive that thing all the time. As you, as you have commented on, I did drive it on a lot of dirt roads. <laughs> I called on farmers, unlike all the larger states, where, like even Minnesota, where they pave all the roads. North Dakota, they don't pave anything. So, yeah, I'd be out there, and the, you know, the best day to call on the farmers when it's raining. Guess oh, what that means? So you're driving this thing on muddy roads. Oh, yeah. That's, it was good for muddy this, roads. This all makes sense now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, this thing was grimy. As I mean, we must have removed like 10 pounds of dirt. And, <laughs> 
Wow. It was it yeah. was pretty bad. And I think I think that's probably what did it in with the frame. They were coated in epoxy, but if you got any chips in it and then moisture, so mud just sitting in there, uh, I yep. think kind of rotted it out. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much what happened there. But um, yeah, dirt roads in North Dakota that makes a ton of sense <laughs> now that I have the car. Yeah. Hey, I mean, and when we went through the car washes, we always had the underbody thing done didn't do a lot of good. But yeah, it's unfortunate with these frames. The epoxy was like a kind of a blessing and a curse, probably more of a curse than anything. But anyway, we'll we'll get past it and, and, and all that. Something else I meant to ask you was, where did you get a DeLorean serviced in the 80s in North Dakota? Uh, the funny thing is, a guy by the name of Ralph Thomas had the Chevrolet and Cadillac dealership. And uh, he set up or bought a DeLorean dealership. So while they were still alive, there was a DeLorean dealership in Fargo, North Dakota. Then, after DeLorean went out of business, I just took it over to the Chevrolet Cadillac because I knew Ralph pretty well, and um, he took care of it. I mean, oh, to okay. the extent... You know. Do you remember if there was anything major replaced? I mean, I know that we're, we're talking, the last you saw this car was really in the 1991, but like, do you remember anything in your ownership, like an engine or a transmission or anything like that? Yes. As DeLorean was going bankrupt, the transmission went out and they wanted five grand for a new one. And Ralph got it through under warranty kind of the last second. Oh, and that's, that's okay. You had told me the transmission went out of gear or something, and that's when it rolled into the, the pickup truck. Was that yeah. was that the failure of the transmission that led to the replacement? I think so. Oh, I mean, okay. That yeah. makes sense. You, yeah, you did tell me the transmission had an issue. I didn't know if it was completely replaced. Okay, so what? Uh, that was like, what, 1983? Uh, late 82, early 83. Okay, probably. pretty early on in the uh, in the DeLorean's life. Okay, so new trans, yeah. cool. Oh, the air filter. I'm sure you, that, I mean, it, I it just, that, yeah. that, that the air filter in the first video was the worst I've ever seen, but if you were driving it on dirt roads, that can happen. How often were you changing the air filter on this? Uh, anytime the oil got changed, I mean, wow. anytime thing got any, any service, the filters got changed. Yeah. Uh, I looked at it and I thought, oh, I think they might have forgotten that or something. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I uh, did try and service that thing fairly much. The reason I parked it is it just wasn't practical for business. I drove it part-time probably from about 84 to 90. So, I mean, when you parked it, was there anything wrong with it? Like, you drove in in 1991, like, was it just a normal day, and then you just left and never saw it again kind of deal? <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, during the, the 80s, I had a couple of Cadillacs in 89 and 90. 90, I think it was 1990. I just decided, okay, I'm just going to drive this one from now on. It was more comfortable. It was the, that was the cat the Cadillac you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. El Dorado. El Dorado. Okay. And then did you ever have any Corvettes back in the 80s too? Four of them. Okay. I know you'd mentioned something about Corvettes. DeLorean versus 80s C4 Corvette. Would would you like better? DeLorean. Really? Yeah, it was more fun. I mean, the Corvettes were nice. The first one I had, I bought a Corvette in 88 and Wait, okay. Time flies when you're having fun. 68. I bought it in 68. It had 4,000 miles on it. The guy I bought it from, he got married and he couldn't afford both. I got the car. So um, that was my first Corvette. The one that got me the DeLorean was a 1978 Indy Pace Corvette. And um, yeah, I loaned it to an employee and uh, she totaled it. <laughs> oh man, is that so? Is that what led up to buying the DeLorean? Yeah, I mean, they just come out and you know thought, hey, that's a cool looking car. Um, and uh, so I bought one, you know, there was no movie by then, so it was just, yeah, that's a cool car, we'll take that one. How, how was it being around and owning one of these cars when the movies started coming out? Was it just, I, I mean, people already, I'm sure, were just staring at you driving this weird, you know, new yeah. car around. Yeah, people noticed you. They tried to stop you. They, they'd wave and honk and holler. And yeah, it was it was kind of neat. That's um, cool. I'll tell you one quick funny story about it. One day, I was going down to the trailer, and probably in a little bit of a hurry. I get under the underpass, and right away, there's like two patrol cars there, and you know, flashing lights, and they're close enough. I, I guess I have to stop. The sheriff walks up to the side of the car, and he says, roll down your window, and you know how the little window is, and he says, is that it? I said, yes. He says, uh, is that there a DeLorean? I said, yes, it is. And he looked me up, he says, Sonny, about four hours ago, by chance, were you headed east? I said, yes, I was. He says, well, Sonny, we missed you then, but we got you now. No. Yeah. You got you for speeding? How? Uh, yeah. Where were you going? Like eighty-eight miles an hour? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Pretty close. 
but no, I think he gave me a warning, which was a good thing about that car too. Well, what's because, that? Oh, the, the police. They'd pull you over, but they'd let you go. Oh, they wanted to check the car out. Yeah. Um, it does uh, corner really, really well. That's what I hear. I hear it corners well. It doesn't break the best, but I am upgrading the brakes and the entire suspension on it. So I'll, I'll improve upon that a little bit. So yeah, I mean, I'm excited to drive it. I, I can't wait. I already bought the Back to the Future tape and the tape deck works and all the speakers work. And, you know, I, I just showed my family a couple days ago for the first time. I mean, I've had it for, you know, well over a month at this point. And I had them over at the shop two days ago and me and my son just sat in there and listened to the Back to the Future soundtrack. So it was, it was fun. I'm excited. <laughs> well, hey, we like your show. Well, I mean, thank you, know, you. Do give me a call when you get out there if you don't know. Do you, you go to Vegas often? No, I'll, I'll just go for SEMA once a year at the most. That's about it. But I, yeah, I'd, I'd love to meet up, meet your son-in-law as well, and uh, buy you a drink and show you some most recent pictures of the DeLorean process at that time. <laughs> yeah, well, he's going there for to attend the show. And, you know, Norwegians are crazy. I don't know if you know it or not, but uh, they have a 4th of July parade because, you know, there's as many Norwegians in America as there are in Norway. There's only five and a half million Norwegians. Oh, wow. I, I, um, didn't, I didn't realize the ratio was, was that close. It's here in the Midwest and out in the state of Washington. Well, you know, so what's crazy is when I went out to North Dakota to get the car, one of my wife's family members lived like 10 minutes away or still lives 10 minutes away so a few of them do we worked on it in a barn in minnesota that's part of the same family and they're all norwegians as well yep. so that's our norway north dakota connection is my wife's side of the family get online dig into amcar a little bit but anyway oh, well. I, i'm over there and they really like america i mean if you ever want to go to a country where everybody loves americans or if you have a relative of any kind you will not pay for a hotel or a get meal out of town. Time there. really um, yeah Anyway, so they're our, our biggest fans, you might say. I want to go there. <laughs> and car-wise, the American Auto Club is nuts. So we went to this 4th of July parade they had. Have you ever seen 100, I'm not exaggerating now, 157 Chevys mm. in absolutely pristine shape, followed by 80 56 T-Birds in pristine shape, followed by, and like that, for like 500 cars. Wow, they love Americana. Like, that. it sounds oh, like they're totally yeah. into the history and everything. My, my uh, son-in-law, Tori, is an attorney. Well, when he married my daughter, two years before they got married, he came over to ask for her hand. You know, that's, they're kind of formal, aren't they? And after she says yes, and she still has a year of law school left here, he, he says, do you mind if I ask you, do you mind if I buy your daughter a car. And I said, no, I don't like you buy a car. Why would you do that? He says, well, you have to understand how Norway works. There's an import duty on all cars based on engine size and horsepower and weight of the car. I said, so what do you want to buy her? He said, a Lincoln Mark 8. This is back in like uh, 92 or 93 or something like that. Yeah. And I said, really? Yeah. And I said, well, fine with me. So they're engaged, but he puts in her name because... If you marry someone who has owned a car for over a year, they can import it duty-free. And why is that important? Because if you would have imported a Lincoln Mark 8 back in you know, the year when they got married, it would have been approximately a $100,000 tariff. No. Yes. Wow. No, he's an attorney. He worked for 15 years with the American Auto Club. Do they anyway, still have the Lincoln out there? Oh, he sold it. Uh, that's the other thing. You can sell it after you've imported it and had it there for two years. He and his wife financed their first house with the Lincoln that they imported to Norway because they sold it for 125 grand. Oh my, someone bought it for 125 grand, a Lincoln Mark 8? That, yeah. That's hilarious. It's funny you mentioned the Lincoln Mark 8 because that's definitely on my list of cars to own because they have a Lincoln Mark 8 LSC, like a, a Edition, and my channel is legit three cars LSC. A lot of my viewers always comment, you got to get a Mark 8 LSC. And I'm like, I know, I love those. I want one too. Well, if you visit Center Law, you can ask them if that's what it Man. was because it was the top end of whatever Lincoln had. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know what year that the LSC came out, but it might might have been. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll end up with a Norwegian Mark 8. <laughs> yeah. But, but anyways, yeah, when he bought it, it cost him 33 grand. And he ended up being president, which is an elected position, by the way. Mm. He does get paid for it because he's a legal representative, too. Yeah. But they have a CEO and they have, I don't know, 30,000 members who own about 70,000 cars. Wow. That yeah. is so cool. Well, I really hope I can meet up with you guys in Las Vegas. That would be amazing. Well, one of these days, you know, if you're going to get a call from somebody, you know, hey, I'm at the airport in Chicago. 
thing out there. Let me see. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dave. I appreciate all the information. I'm sure the viewers will appreciate it too. It's always nice to tie together one of these projects, the story, its life before and everything. It makes the car just a little bit more special to me, knowing that it was, you know, a one owner and I get to speak to the original owner and it's such an older car that's it's, it's just a rare opportunity for me. So I appreciate you talking to me. I, I appreciate the fact that you remember so much about the car too, because I know it's one of many that you've had and it was a long time ago. So they're kind of unique. They're a little unique. Yeah. <laughs> So right. thanks, and By thank you so much for the little DeLorean. Yeah. I'm keeping this in the big DeLorean at all times. <laughs> all right. All right. Hey, Alex, good luck. Thank uh, you. Did you get a chance? Give me a buzz when you're out there. Okay, good luck with the trip. Thanks. Thanks again. Okay, bye. bye. How cool was that? Oh my gosh, that is so awesome. He's the nicest guy in the world. And I mean, I, I don't I don't know how old Dave is, but I mean, obviously he's, he's gotta be up there. He's sharp as a tack, remembers so much about the car. And it's just so cool to know that, you know, he, he was really into it, you know? He drove it for 10 years. Although he had many other cars, including four Corvettes, he picked the DeLorean out of all of them. So anyway, this is awesome. It needs a little bit of refurbishing. It's missing the mirror here and the door doesn't work, but that's just how it is with the DeLorean. It can't be 100%. Hey, the front opens on this too. Does the back open? Oh, it does. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, people. I was about to do my outro, but I gotta show you this. Can we see the engine? Yes, look at that. Oh, that's phenomenal. I wonder if I can use this as a reference if I forgot where something went on my DeLorean. I don't know. But in the next one, we're putting it mostly all back together. We have steering, suspension, brakes, big brakes, coilovers, control arms. I'm painting everything. It's gonna look awesome. And then I'm, I'm gonna try and drive this car for the first time in the next video. We'll see what happens. I don't know. But having that conversation with Dave definitely cheered me up and uh, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to work for the next video, which right after this outro, I'm getting going. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already, and most importantly, have a fantastic day. I'll see all of you in the next video. All the tubes are ready. All the tubes are cleaned up, dried. All the tubes are cleaned up. Let's see how, let's see what Google Translate says for boot. Let's see how Google Translate says this. I was looking for, I was, um, uh, this is kind of like, so far my DeLorean is looking pretty good. Throwing a baseball over here. All right. I can't see. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay, there we go. I don't know what this, uh, what's a necklace called around your wrist? A uh, bracelet. Bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> that's so weird. I mean, that makes sense, but that's the weirdest thing you could have said that. Okay. So things are looking up for the Tesla. We're about to talk to Dave, the pre, so the Tesla. <laughs> See what happened? <clears throat> <clears throat>